Blessed be God, right now I'd like to do a refutation of irresistible grace. And I gather from a Calvinist perspective, and I think I've talked about this in one of the other previous videos I did recently here on Calvinism, that Calvinists are a little different about certain aspects, okay? And, you know, they might be a little bit dispensational, some of them, some of them may not be, some of them may be more into covenant theology and things like this, and, you know, Luther was a um, monergist, but some people say he wasn't once saved, always saved, so, you know, I mean, Luther's not Calvinist, really, but a lot of the bondage of the will stuff, it was certainly very Calvinistic. So we know that you can resist the Holy Ghost, okay? Now you might say, well, that was sinners that Stephen was rebuking. Those were those that had unconditional reprobation and they were never going to be saved. Well, then, you know, why say that you're resisting the Holy Ghost then? Now, if they were later going to be saved, they were at times resisting the Holy Ghost. And we understand that the Holy Ghost is the spirit of grace from Hebrews 10, 26 through 31. So now if you say, well, grace is irresistible once you've been elect. Well, when do you get elect? You know, are you only elect for part of your life? Or I thought you were elect before you're even born, according to some of the Calvinist doctrines and what they would say concerning perhaps something that Paul said or Jeremiah. Okay. So they're not being consistent, okay? Now, grace is resisted by most, okay? Because grace teaches repentance from Titus 2, and most aren't repenting, okay? So they are resisting grace. Now, we know the proper context and the most specific from Hebrews 10 is that those that were sanctified, okay, they go against the blood and they sin willfully and they were sanctified, okay, and they do despite the spirit of grace, okay. Which means that they lose grace, they lose the atonement, okay. The atonement is in blood, okay, it's the Son of God being high priest, offering his own sacrifice. And that's the religious aspect that is in the kingdom of heaven, okay, in the temple, in the third heaven. On the relational aspect, this is supposed to draw reconciliation, okay? And it's supposed to, but in most, it doesn't happen. They will not be reconciled to God. But you can turn coat Christ like Judas and you can sin woefully after you receive the knowledge of the truth. Okay. And you can resist the grace of God. Okay. The grace of God is the most resisted thing in the world today, actually. Okay. And we know there must be a falling away first. Okay. So grace... And most people that think they have grace don't even have it. But if you follow what is taught in the prophets, you know, grace is given to the humble. Okay? And those that are with the law, you know, hear the instruction of your father and forsake not the law of your mother. Okay, there's where the ornament of grace is. So you have to have what biblical grace is, and in the which case, we know grace teaches repentance because this blood of Christ that we preach from Hebrews 13, and we see about grace there and also from 2 Corinthians 9, it causes perfection, okay, and having faith, you know, in the blood. So grace is in repentance, faith, and perfection. 
Okay, so when the Son of God finds that your garments are defiled and you don't have perfect works, you have resisted the grace of God. Okay, which means you have resisted the grace of God against your own soul. Okay. And no, I mean, there is no other teaching. Okay, so praise God.